Um, well, we were, we're very pleased to um, at this initiative by Penn to collect data from the ice during the winter of 2009 um, because it fitted in very well with the overall effort by ourselves and others to map the changes in the thickness of the Arctic ice cover that have been happening in recent years, which are quite dramatic and have been leading to this rapid retreat of the ice in the summer. Uh, so if you want to understand how much the ice is retreating in the summer and why it's retreating, you need to do thickness measurements during the preceding winter. And uh, in the case of 2009, uh, Penn's expedition was the only one that was out on the ice measuring thickness during the winter. So that makes the, the, the measurements valuable. Uh, it fitted in also with work we've been doing over the last 30 plus years at uh, Cambridge on mapping ice thicknesses across the Arctic using upward looking sonar from British Navy submarines. And the last voyage that uh, was done on that basis was in the winter of 2007, which, where we got data from the region that later became open water in that, in that world, sort of world record retreat of 2007. So it was very important to see how that uh, trend towards open Arctic in the summer was continuing and that the data collected from the winter of 2009 was important uh, in order to show what the ice was like before it melted. Um, what, so what we did was to take the data that the pen collected, it was a mixture of drilling data which collects, which measures the thickness of the undeformed ice, that's the ice which has grown naturally to that, to that thickness, and then his counts of pressure ridges together with estimates of the heights of the ridges could be converted using the, what we know about the shapes of pressure ridges to, into a, a dense, probability density function, we call it. <coughs> that is a distribution of thickness of the ice going from all the, the thin ice categories right through the undeformed ice to the maximum thickness. And um, we found that the, the average thickness of the undeformed ice, that's the, the, the holes which Penn drilled, was about 1.8 metres, which is typical of first-year ice in the Arctic. That's ice which has only reached, only had one year of growth. And similarly, the, the, if you add in the pressure ridges, you get an overall thickness on average of 4.8 metres, which is, again, a typical value. And the, the distribution that was obtained from this combination of ridge height estimation and drilling was, was a very uh, reasonable distribution of thickness that, that agreed with the, the, the shapes of ice thicknesses, distributions measured from submarines. So uh, we did conclude that this was a valid technique that, that, that does give you a good idea of, of ice thickness distribution. Um, the main conclusion, I guess, was that the area, the whole of the transect that Penn did was in first year ice, that all of the drilling data and all of the ridge height estimations were typical of ice which is less than a year old. And the part of the Arctic that this was done in is a region that in the past has been largely composed of multi-year ice. So one of the ways in which, we're, one of the reasons in w for which the, the Arctic ice is disappearing in summer is the fact that um, multi-year ice is shrinking back to, uh, I suppose, a kind of Alamo, just a re where it's making its last stand, uh, north of Ellesmere Island and Greenland. That's in one particular part of the Arctic Ocean. And the rest of the Arctic, which used to be composed of a mixture of first-year ice and multi-year ice, now seems to be composed entirely of first-year ice. This, this ice is thin enough that with the increased warming that we have in the Arctic, it mostly melts or breaks up during the summer. So it's a very vulnerable kind of ice cover. And we know that in future years, um, th this retreat is going to increase because more and more of the Arctic is being uh, covered with first-year ice rather than multi-year ice. Uh, we now have um, newer models of how the Arctic ice cover is going to develop in the next few years. The previous models were found to be inadequate because they weren't predicting the big acceleration in ice retreat that happened in 2007. Um, but having been confronted with the facts, the modelers went away and did some more maths and came up with new models, uh, which now predict that um, 
the summer ice cover in the Arctic will completely vanish in 20 to 30 years' time. That means there won't be any sea ice there at all. But in much less time than that, the ice in summer will be shrinking back to this last bastion north of Greenland and Ellesmere Island. So within a decade, we will see a largely ice-free Arctic Ocean in summer. Not completely, but there will be small, a small enough area left that you can regard the Arctic Ocean as open as far as uh, transport is concerned, for instance. You can sail, you'll be able to sail across the Arctic Ocean from Bering Strait to the Atlantic um, without any hindrance. So it won't be very long before we have to start thinking of the Arctic as uh, an open sea. We take, we've, the man has taken the lid off the northern end of his planet and we can't put that lid back on again because the processes that, that we've set in motion by inducing global warming uh, are more or less irreversible. We can't go back because with the amount of open water we now have in summer, the Arctic Ocean warms up during the summer months so that it's, it takes more cooling to, to get it back to a freezing condition in the winter. And also the, the open water absorbs more solar radiation, that's the albedo is lower, and that feed produces a feedback which itself leads to more rapid warming. So we do find that this retreat of the sea ice is going to, to continue and inevitably will lead us to an ice-free summer Arctic Ocean. So the data that, that can help us to understand how fast this is happening uh, is critically is, is data that comes from the winters preceding the summer retreats. And so where you can get data from submarines or, or other underwater vehicles, that's great. Where you can't, uh, you really need to have people uh, working on the ice, walking across the ice, collecting that vital data from, from the, the winter time uh, Arctic Ocean. So that's one of the reasons we feel this has been a very valuable exercise and we're very grateful to Penn for proposing to do scientific work during, during a, a manual transect of the or pedestrian rather than manuals <laughs> uh, transect of the Arctic Ocean. Um, so, uh,